I've had the Apple Watch since the beginning of time, starting with the Series 2. But my wife was on a Series 4, and there's so many nifty features with the Series 8, like sleep tracking, as well as a body temperature sensor to predict your period. I had to get it for her. But then from the ashes, a new device emerged. The Aura Ring. And I'm sure you're just like me, but the first question I want to know is, is this cool looking ring worth it? Well, that's what you're going to find out today. I'm going to do a super detailed review and compare this and the Apple Watch Series 8. What is up, guys? It's Chris with Everyday Chris, and it's time to talk tech. Now, right away, the Aura Ring has been the go-to ring for all the famous celebrities and athletes, which makes people way more interested in it. I think they even have a collaboration with Gucky, AKA Gucci. It's also super nifty, a small ring you wear that monitors not only your heart rate, but your blood oxygen, as well as a temperature sensor and your sleep. That's legit. So first, let's talk about how expensive these bad boys are. So I currently have the Gen 3 or Ring Heritage, which is their newest, most updated ring. But of course, with my luck, a week later, they released the Gen 3 Ring Horizon, which is different in one way. It's completely circular all around. This is a good or a bad thing, which I'll talk about in a second. Also, because it's technically an older design, the ring that I have, the Heritage, is cheaper and starts at $299, with the most expensive gold starting at $450. The Gen 3 Horizon, on the other hand, starts at $349, but it comes in a cool new color that a lot of ladies would love called Rose Gold, which is their most expensive ring coming in at a whopping $550. Now for me, I went with the Stealth, so it has a matte black look to it. Already what makes the Aura Ring so unique and amazing is, I mean, it's a ring. It's small, it looks good. It's a ring that tracks your sleep, your blood oxygen measurements, your heart rates, your workouts, all in one and you wear it on your finger. That's crazy. I mean, all those sensors packed in this tiny hole. <laughs> but the thing with this ring is as small a size you can get is size six. This can be an issue for some people with small fingies. However, Aura Ring does say they recommend wearing the ring not on your ring finger, but on your index and middle finger, which are actually bigger. Regardless, before you purchase a size, please get the free ring sizer to make sure. For me, my ring size is size eight, and I didn't have any issues with any of the rings I wore in the past. However, for my heritage ring, I'm not sure if it's because it's flat on one side or because of the ring sensors. It's such a tight fit. Only way for me to take off my ring is with soap and water, or a ton of lube. However, you want your ring to be snug because you need the sensors to touch your finger, but you also don't want it too tight. And it sucks that they don't have any half sizes. Just try it out and realize that the ring may be too tight at first until your finger gets used to it. As far as weight goes, the ring isn't heavy at all and it's only between four to six grams depending on your ring size. It's light enough for me to realize I'm not wearing it and I don't notice it at all when I'm sleeping. The biggest difference, however, is that the Horizon version is a full circle. The Heritage version has a little flat surface on one part of the ring. And to have the best, most accurate reading of the Aura Ring, the sensors have to be placed on the bottom of the finger, not at the top. This is why the Heritage is so great, because as long as I know the flat surface is on the top, I know I'm getting the most accurate reading. And we all know it looks good, but do you wanna spend $350 on something that just looks nice? I need the features, which the ring has. But my one pet peeve with all my products is a monthly fee, which the Aura Ring has, but I'll talk about that later. And then we have Apple's newest watch, the Apple Watch Series 8. Depending on the screen size and bands you choose, the price can vary. However, let's just go with my wife's watch, the most basic one. For this one, the screen size is 41 millimeters wide, and it's a decent size, but it's not crazy big. With a silver aluminum case, a new succulent solo loop band with no cellular, just GPS, the Apple Watch Series 8 starts at $399. It is heavier, however, and it comes in at around 32 grams. This does make it more noticeable when you are sleeping and it's on your wrist, but the solo loop is super soft and comfortable and is perfect for wearing while you're sleeping but it also looks good out and about. What makes the Apple Watch a touch more expensive, however, is the Apple Care. 
For the Series 8, it adds about 80 extra dollars. However, with their standard one year warranty on the watch, with Apple Care, you do get an additional two years of coverage, giving you a total of three years. And for me, I haven't had any issues with my watch, so I haven't really had the need to get the Apple Care. But it's always nice to have in case your Apple Watch battery dies or something. With the Aura Ring, you also get a good one year warranty, but unfortunately, it doesn't cover any battery issues, which is the main reason why I feel like you would need the warranty. So overall, the Aura Ring is slightly cheaper than the Apple Watch, but there's just so many differences about these two devices, not to mention the hidden costs. Now, this one is a deal breaker for many, including myself. I mean, look on Aura's website. Where does it mention in plain sight, in order for 99% of these features to work, you need to pay a $6 membership fee. I hate to pay for a device that's not cheap with the expectation of all these cool features included with the device, only realizing that after my trial ends, I have to fork over a monthly fee, $6 to be exact, to utilize all the benefits of the Aura Ring. However, having said all that, the information the Aura Ring provides is super beneficial and helpful, and it may be worth it to some people. Without a membership, you can still use the Aura Ring. You'll still get your daily scores like sleep, readiness, and activity, but that's it. There's no details or anything, which is kind of the most important part and the reason why you purchase this ring in the first place. With the Apple Watch, you get what you pay for, including all the features. This is what Apple does right. There's no hidden fees, there's no surprises. Sure, they do have their new Apple Fitness, which are like workout classes and meditations you can pay for, which is really cool and it syncs with your watch but it's absolutely not necessary and it doesn't relate to your watch purchase at all. Let me know in the comments below if you guys wanna see a video of Apple Watch Fitness to see if it's worth it. Now, what I really love about the Aura Ring is it's not made of some cheap metal, it's made out of titanium. This makes it durable, but it's not as durable as tungsten. This means it will scratch. And if you get a colored ring, it's just a color they add on top of the ring. And if you work out and get that bread at the gym, lifting weights, eventually the color will come off as you can see. It's honestly not a big deal, but keep in mind that the color will come off and scratch at the gym. So you may wanna go with the silver color. It's also waterproof up to 330 feet. So swimming or diving isn't an issue. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty where I talk about the workouts and the sleep tracking and if it really works and all that jazz, let's quickly talk about battery life. Now I love Apple products, but with other smartwatches like the Garmin with a minimum battery life of at least seven days, you'd think Apple would have good battery life by now. But no, the Apple Watch Series 8 has a rated battery life of about 18 hours. And if you do any workouts and all that, it does drain it more. I will say though on a positive note, even though it's rated for 18 hours, I tested it out by fully charging the watch before sleeping. Then the next day we did a workout, used the watch all day, and I was still able to sleep the whole next night with the battery life of around 3% the next morning. So even though it says 18 hours, it lasts us a whole day and a half, which is pretty good. But if battery life is a concern, they do have way more battery life on low power mode. It's something like 36 hours, but you do miss out on a ton of features. Now, with the Aura Ring, it may not have a screen or show the time and do all this other amazing stuff the Apple Watch does, but the battery life is okay for what it is. I mean, what, were you expecting something amazing? I first thought it was amazing because it is rated for seven days of battery life, which is pretty awesome. Physically, it only turns the sensors on every now and then. And there is a feature to keep off to get the most battery life out of your ring, like location services. I learned that the hard way. When I kept location services on, my battery life only lasted like three days. However, like I said before, with the ring that's so hard to take on and off, I wanna take it off as little as possible. Now, Aura does give you some battery tips and it tells you not to charge your ring to 100% and just leave it there or let your battery get dangerously low. However, for me, I'm only a few months into my ring and my battery health and my wife's battery health is already decreasing. But I went from a solid seven day battery life to only about five days before needing to charge again. Now let's move on to features. This is a super juicy part. So what makes the Aura Ring so special? So first off, besides the ring itself, the app is what really makes the Aura Ring unique and it's something worth looking into. When you create an account, you can customize things like your goals, 
how you're sleeping as well as what affects your sleep. You wanna think of the Aura Ring app as an online coach. They monitor your vitals, the sleep, and provides you with recommendations on how to improve it. One important one is their readiness score. By using your activity, sleep, and heart rate, and body temperature, it provides you a summary score of how ready you'll be for the next day. It goes into a ton of detail. It allows you to see your monthly, weekly, and daily score to keep track. When you achieve a score above 85, it gives you a nice crown icon and tries to motivate you to get stuff done that day. But let me show you how it looks. So let's talk about one of my days. On this day, my readiness score was really good. It was a 90. It shows my resting heart rate, my heart rate variability, my body temperature, recovery index, sleep, sleep balance, everything. And it kind of gives you like a graph of how you did. So if you click on it, it gives you more information about what it is. And if you keep scrolling down, you have like a nice graph. It's super helpful to have this information, but you need something, you have to understand what, what it means. So if you click on home, it kind of shows you a rundown of everything. So it says readiness, 90 optimal, nice timing, great job pausing and recharging your body and mind. So I think I must've had a lower readiness score but it knows when I'm taking a nap and for how long, and it adds points to your overall readiness score, which is really cool. Now my sleep was super good. It was a 91, so you can click on it and you can kind of see, okay, I had an 89, but my nap boosted my efficiency score. So it gave me two points. So I have a 91 now, which is super awesome. Okay, so if you go to the sleep tab, it kind of shows you more detail. Like I was in bed for 10 hours, but I slept for eight hours and 26 minutes. My efficiency was 87%. My restfulness was good, which means I didn't like toss and turn a lot. I was in some solid sleep, sheesh. REM sleep, two hours and 11 minutes. Latency is how long it takes you to fall asleep. For most of the time, for me, it's usually red because I sleep so fast and that can show that you're tired and fatigued. However, this time I slept at 16 minutes, which is really good. Timing optimal, everything's perfect. Oxygen saturation, my breathing regularity, so yeah, it shows so much data. Okay, we talked about a good day, let's talk about a bad day. So for this day on Wednesday, November 23rd, uh, my readiness score, I mean, it still wasn't that bad, 78. I mean, my wife sometimes is in the 60s. You can see that my resting heart rate was a little bit high, my body temperature was a little bit high as well. If we go to the sleep tab, you can see that my REM sleep was only an hour and 18 minutes. My deep sleep was pretty good though, so that's good. However, I think I remember this day, I wasn't feeling too well when I woke up. I was just groggy, I was tired, I just wanted to sleep more. My latency was bad. See, this is how it normally is. It took me three minutes to fall asleep, which is insane because normally uh, it should be a little bit higher. However, I must've been super tired. And it just has that graph. I was pretty much sleeping the whole night, you can kind of see. So you would think I would have good sleep because I didn't wake up. However, I wasn't in REM sleep for that long, which is not good. So it gives you so much interpretation of the data. So I have to say the ring is super accurate. It really knows when I'm sleeping. It knows the second I wake up and I feed the dogs at three, but it also knows if I'm too tired and I go back to sleep. It's also super cool because I remember I ate right before I went to bed one night and I wasn't feeling too good. I just felt so indigested. So the next morning, the ring asked me, if I ate too close to bedtime because it affected my sleep score. And I did. So it's pretty cool how accurate it is. Another great thing about Aura Ring is it focuses on your mental well being with included meditations as well as soundscapes. During that time, the ring monitors your heart rate and provides you with feedback at the end. And I mean, there's a good amount of short meditations to help guide you back to calmness. There's like 50 of them as well as breathing sessions, sleep sessions, and learning sessions to teach you certain things, which is kind of cool. But the cool thing is because the ring has a skin temperature sensor, it can help predict when someone will get their period. It forms a baseline temperature, and when these fluctuate two to three degrees, it starts to predict that the floodgates will open within a week or so. And overall, my wife said it's fairly accurate. The skin temperature sensor also is beneficial for men out there because it may help predict when you're about to catch a cold or something, which is kind of cool. Overall, there's so much data the Aura Ring provides and it may seem overwhelming at first, but after a few days, you start to understand it and you get used to it. Now the Apple Watch on the other hand is well, I mean a smartwatch. It's like an iPhone on your wrist. You can text, answer phone calls, set timers, reminders. I mean everything. But as far as the health metrics are concerned, it also offers heart rate monitoring, but it can also help if it detects your heart rate is too high 
or too low, which has helped a ton of people with health issues. The cool thing about the Apple Watch is you can take an electrocardiogram built in and give the results to your doctor. And unlike other smartwatches, you can take your blood O2 measurements whenever you want, not just when you're sleeping. With the Series 8, it has that built in skin temperature sensor to help monitor and predict the period cycle. And my wife said, very similar to the Oura Ring, it's about the same. And the cool thing with the new Apple Watch Series 8, it can even automatically call emergency services if it thinks you've been in a big accident. And of course, if you've taken a big fall. It measures your sleep, has mindfulness sessions, and even has a built-in decibel meter. I mean, there's so many features with the Apple Watch, I can't fit it in one video. As far as the health app goes on the iPhone, it provides a ton of data, but the big difference is there isn't an interpretation of that data, like a coaching session with the Aura Ring. Overall, it's great data, but again, what separates Aura apart is the analysis of that data. As far as the Apple Watch goes, it does a great job at measuring your sleep as well. And it knows when you're awake in deep REM sleep and it helps track it easily. However, it does not track when you're napping. But it's nice to know if you woke up super tired, you can easily check to see if you got enough REM sleep that night. However, again, there's no interpretation of the data. So if you didn't know what REM sleep was or deep REM sleep, you wouldn't really know what to do. Now, one great thing about the ring is you don't need your phone nearby unless you're doing like a meditation. And this is a huge thing for a ton of people. Most people need these sleep devices because they want to analyze their sleep and they have trouble sleeping. And the first rule of thumb is never have your phone nearby so you can avoid looking at the screen and avoid any distractions. You really need that wind down time before sleeping. So with that, my wife keeps her phone outside the bedroom and in the morning she has no trouble syncing the ring data onto her phone. It's also super helpful that the ring is just so small. You don't even realize it's on. It kind of does its own thing without you having to think about it. And when you're ready, you can just whip out your phone to view the data. Apple Watch, on the other hand, is heavily tied to your iPhone. In order to track your sleep, you need to ensure you have a sleep schedule enabled on your phone first. You don't have to do this every time, however, but if you do end up sleeping at different times and your phone doesn't know, you'll have to manually enable the sleep function on your Apple Watch. Also, because it is a screen, even though your sleep mode is on, which does turn the screen off. If you actually touch the scroll wheel or press it on accident, the display will turn on slightly. But if your eyes are adjusted to complete darkness, even any sort of light may disturb your sleep. And another huge thing, even if you have sleep mode and do not disturb enabled on your phone and watch, if you have certain features enabled, you will get notifications on your watch while you're sleeping. Let's just say you have the feature enabled where if someone calls you more than twice in a short period of time, the call will go through. I mean, just in case for emergencies that call will transfer to your watch and wake you up. I mean, it's a good and bad thing. It's a good thing if someone's calling you to let you know your house is on fire, but it's also a bad thing if it's just your friend calling you multiple times to ask you what you're eating for lunch for the next day. Overall, it's not a deal breaker, but keep that in mind because the Apple Watch is technically a second mini phone. And let's not forget that Apple Watch only really works with the Apple ecosystem. So if you have a Samsung phone, you're out of luck. The Aura Ring, however, has an app both for Android and iOS. Now let's talk about my favorite workouts. I mean, this one is a huge disappointment. I'm sorry, Aura. I mean, it even tells you to work out with the ring, but it only provides you with five workouts. And when you do enable one of these workouts, the ring's heart rate monitoring stays on the whole workout, which decreases your battery life like crazy. It also sucks that it doesn't show you real-time heart rate monitoring. I mean, this is huge as it's best to try to maintain a certain heart rate during a workout. However, the Aura app just shows you a timer. It does provide you with heart rate at the end. And if you have location services on with your phone, shows you where you've been, but that's it. They do have workouts you can customize and add if you wanted to later, but again, you can't track them. The good thing is though, you can import any Apple Health data to the app, so you can add them to your score. I was expecting way more with the workouts, but who knows, they may add more workouts in the future. The Apple Watch, however, got workouts down pat. 
Not only can you choose from a crazy amount of workouts, it knows the way your hand position is and can notify you to automatically start a certain workout. It also provides you with real-time data as you work out as well. It tracks your steps, it tracks where you've gone, and you can even locally store music on your watch so you don't need to carry your phone around. Overall, as far as workouts are concerned, the Apple Watch wins hands down. All these things are awesome with both of these devices. For me, I sleep like a bear. My wife, on the other hand, always had issues sleeping. I mean, she takes melatonin, she takes ashwagandha, and all these supplements to help her sleep. So the Oura Ring was supposed to be the perfect fit for her. And overall, she does like the information it provides. Like she knows she didn't sleep well and it shows. But honestly, a lot of the information is kind of obvious. Like Oura Ring will say, take it easy today, you didn't sleep too well. Well, no sh Sherlock, I feel super tired. For her, she said the information is nice to know, but you really have to be proactive about it and set it as a priority. Otherwise, the information the ring provides isn't gonna help you. Now, Aura does know their membership isn't cheap, which is why they try and analyze your health data and provide pertinent information to you to make it seem more worth it. And you can really tell based on the app data from Apple versus Aura. However, I asked my wife, do you think the Aura Ring is worth it? She told me that because she's so worried about her sleep and analyzing the data, it actually makes her sleep worse a lot of times. But when she doesn't think about it, she just sleeps better. And for $6 a month, she's definitely gonna be thinking about it. With Apple Watch, although it doesn't provide you with sleep scores and interpretation of the data, because it's Apple, there are a ton of sleep data interpreter apps out there. I mean, if you really want a deep analysis of your sleep data that even includes sleep scores like Aura, you can easily subscribe to apps like Sleepwatch. And again, I'm not sponsored, it's just highly reviewed. But honestly, there's just so many features that Apple Watch provides for only $50 more, it's hard to choose the ring over the watch. Overall, the watch does the same exact things as the Aura Ring, minus the coaching. If you feel an interpretation of the data, as well as the coaching is super important to you, then consider the Aura Ring. But if you want more flexibility and more features, definitely get the Apple Watch. Anyways guys, hope that video helped you guys. Let me know in the comments below if you had to choose between the Apple Watch or the Aura Ring, which one did you get? Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.